Hi, welcome to the Rittner Floral School in Boston, Mass. I'm Dr. Steve Rittner, and it's a pleasure to have you come into one of our classrooms today. We've got a neat little demonstration planned for you, and I think you're going to really enjoy it. The subject, simple things that you can do with gladiolas. Yes, simple designs that you can do with gladiolas. Let's talk a little about this. The gladiola, it is a very, very neat flower. It's a flower that's been around almost forever. It's considered a workhorse in the floral field. But in my opinion, this particular flower has gotten a bad rap. Why? Because of its success. It is big, it's showy, we get it in fairly long uh, stems. It comes in a rainbow of colors. You can get them in just about any color under the rainbow, and you can even get them in little bicolors like this. Notice this one's yellow with a little touch of orange or red in the center. It opens up and gives you a magnificent show, and for that reason, it's been, I believe, overused in many ways. It's been used a lot in sympathy and tribute work. And because of that, people often associate this as a sympathy type flower. However, you can do some magnificent things with gladiola flowers. And the purpose of this video today is to show you some very, very simple things that you can do. Taking uh, some glads that you can either pick up at your local florist or at your mass outlet and come up with some really, really ni res nice results quickly and easily. Now, the first thing that you should be aware of when you buy gladiolas you don't want to buy them fully open like this. Generally, the best way to buy them and the way to look for them when you're going to your florist or your mass outlet is more like uh, what you see in the top part here. In other words, when the stems are showing little buds or just a little bit of color or maybe a small just opening thing. When the whole uh, stem looks like that, that's really the best way to buy it because that means it's very, very fresh. Take it, cut the stem, put it in warm water and preservative, and you'll find that it'll really hold very, very well. When it gets to this level of development on a gladiola, it means that it's towards the end of its lifespan, but you'll still get two, three days at least out of it if you've done the right things in terms of cutting the stem and putting it in warm preservative, warm water and preservative, so it'll hold well for you. Now, you can do so many things with this flower, and this is why we're very excited about showing this uh, to you. Uh, first of all, one, one thing that people normally don't associate with gladiolas is bud vases. We can take a bud vase, and here we've got a, a ceramic bud vase, very, very contemporary one in feeling, and we can take a bud vase and simply take a glad and drop it into a bud vase. So now we have something that's very, very pretty. It could work uh, on the dining room table. It could work in a kitchenette. It could work at a workstation at work. Simple, quick, easy, and yet so showy and dramatic with one single stem. Glads can work very, very well on their own, but as you'll see, they also play nicely with other flowers too. So we could do something like this, or we could mix it by adding another flower to it, like a little stem of spray rose or something else like that. We could add a little branch here, a little bit of foliage. Um, it's quick and easy, and it's a fun way to use a glad that you can pick up uh, on an everyday basis. And it adds so much, if you think about it, to your workstation or to your kitchenette. Now, if one glad is good, well, two or more are better. And here is a good example of how we can play with the containers that we might have. Everybody who loves flowers generally, after a while, accumulates containers. And here we have a container from our collection. It's obviously a little bit more uh, developed, a bigger container, a little fancier than our bud vase. But because it's a little bit fancier and because it's a little bit bigger, it has a wider opening. And therefore, we can work two or three stems of our glads in here. Isn't that a glorious piece? Again, one, two, three stems of glads. Buy them when they're tight. Let them gradually open. You'll get a few days out of it. It'll look absolutely magnificent and it can add so much to a room. This one not only would work on a kitchenette, but I'd suggest something like this, for example, in your bedroom on a sideboard or perhaps on a little table next to the bed. It makes it so much nicer and adds a touch of nature to the room. So it gives a really, really neat effect. Now, we've shown a bud vase idea, a more developed container with a few of our glads. Let's get a little bit even more ornate. And here we have a bigger container a bigger container. And you can see that clads work very well whether we're talking about a small base, a medium-sized base, or a large base. In the case of the one here on the right, 
we've taken one of our containers and we've done something rather interesting. We've taken some of the beaded wire uh, that are available to us. You can get this beaded wire from your local florist or mass outlet. It's basically wire with little faux pearls in it. It's really pretty and we placed it around the top just to add a little touch. We could also uh, do similar things uh, with some of our curly willow and branch material and then placed a couple of stems of glads in here. We've done something a little bit differently on this one. You'll notice we've let one go slightly to the left kind of at an angle and one is coming directly up to give us kind of a contrast. We could leave it like this or if we wanted to we could cut this so that now it really is emphasizing this angled kind of feel so that now we've got something that is shooting off to the side. Let me, my viewer, uh, show you this because I think you'll find it kind of interesting. This becomes a little bit more dynamic because what we're doing is we're playing with the concept of asymmetry. Asymmetry. In other words, something like this we have up and down. Something like this, a few things kind of coming up here. But when you look at this particular piece here, now especially when we've cut it, you can see that it gives us this dramatic angle. Some people like that kind of an approach because it feels very dynamic. Some people might find it a little bit disturbing. But I think it's interesting and it's again something that you can do using we've got one, two, three stems of glads put into a larger container. Something that just about anybody can do in terms of playing with their container collection. And by just the way we've angled it and cut it you now have an asymmetrical kind of thing. Something that feels very dynamic because we've got a diagonal working on this piece. Simple quick and easy. Now let's show you another idea that you can do using glads and this one is kind of a cool one and I think you guys are really going to enjoy it. Our staff here at Rittners has been working very very hard to come up with some interesting ideas for you using this wonderful flower. In this particular case we have a column, a glass column. These have become very very popular in the last few years. People love them for parties, functions and things like that. And what we've done in this glass collar is we've taken some branchy berry material. In this particular uh, case uh, we've got it inside the container, inside the container, and it's wrapped around the inside of the container and even comes up above the container. We're using some bittersweet here. In some places in the country this is not available, but in other places it is. But there are all kinds of things like curly willow, branchy materials that you could use in place, and of course all kinds of buried types of materials uh, that we can get that are on branches. By taking it and working it in through the base, it creates an infrastructure into which we can place our glads. And the glads here can be placed two or three flowers just randomly and it gives a very, very pretty effect and it gives a very, very interesting effect. And the stems here really help control it and hold it in place. Now there is one thing you have to do, you do have to be careful about when you're working with something like this is obviously if we've got botanicals below the water level, um, you're going to have to change your water more frequently. Within a day these things get cloudy and therefore you have to empty them constantly and add new water to it in order to make it work. But I think it's a neat idea and certainly something that is worth considering in terms of ways of playing with this magnificent flower. It makes a great show, doesn't take too many flowers. We have four total in this particular base. Let me show you something else, my viewer, that you might find interesting. Again, playing with this uh, theme in terms of our glads. Here we've got a simple little design, again, making use of our glads. In this particular case, we're playing with a fall theme because normally we think in terms of uh, fall and, fly and apples and things like that back to school or just like people love to go apple picking in the fall. We love to do that here in New England. And what we've got is a little container here with some apples on one side and we have some of our glad florets over here. And a few of our Alstroemeria worked in in between. Alstroemeria is another wonderful flower that we enjoy. It comes in a variety of colors, nice and open. This is how you can take some open florets and really get some very, very good impact. To create a little height in this, we have some of our river cane over here, piece over here, and a little bit of our curly willow shooting around to create almost like a little crescent shape inside. Quick and easy, it requires two containers inside our larger container and it's another way that we can incorporate glads very, very quickly and easily into an arrangement. But wait, there's more. 
here we have another design that we want to show you my viewer and just bear with me while I get it here for you to see this one's a cool one you like the column that we showed you here's another example making use of some of our glassware in this particular design this is a rather interesting one because we've got a large large uh, glass container here um, much bigger uh, we actually have a piece of foam in there uh, and we have some of the GLAD foliage. GLAD generally has this amazing foliage that is uh, almost sword shaped that we can take and use it and we've wrapped it around so we're even making use of the GLAD foliage and then a few open florets and ends essentially this required two pieces of GLADs that we cut down so that we could get the uh, the ends of them as well as more open florets and then we have again some of our uh, bittersweet in this particular case but you could use all kinds of things ranging from hypericum to uh, uh, viburnum opulus to any of your buried materials to give us a contrast. Once again you can see GLADs play very very well with other things and this is a good example of something very simple and easy that you can play with just to throw a few flowers and florets in, mix some berries in with it and you come up with a very very interesting composition. This would work very very well on my mantle and I have a feeling that's where it's going to go after this particular demonstration. Okay, let's show you one more design that I think you're going to find kind of neat. And I think you'll enjoy this one. Here, what we've got is a rather low bowl, the kind of bowl that you would put on maybe your dining room table, something that you could place on your dining room table for fruit or something like that. We have some foam in it, and then what we've done here in this particular unit is just randomly placed some GLADs in here. Let me move this, my viewer, so you can see just this design that we're featuring right now. You can see that we have just some GLADs that we placed one, two, three, four, four or five flowers here placed in here, almost like a grove of trees. That's the best way to describe this almost like a grove of trees. Again, design time on something like this is very, very fast. You can throw this kind of thing together very, very quickly and easily. This is a good example, again, of the fact that we've got glads in all kinds of colors. This hot pink works so well. We could have placed this where we had flowers going all the way down to the bottom, making it a more traditional vertical kind of uh, configuration. But we've deliberately left this a little bit open here so it almost feels like trees sprouting in a grove. Uh, on the bottom, we've got this amazing uh, material. These are called mega beads. They're put out by the folks at Oasis. It is a wonderful accessory and it adds a nice contrast to what we're doing with our glads. And we have, of course, our Spanish moss uh, covering our mechanics. It looks really, really nice. And again, it is an example of some of the things you can do with glads. So, my viewer, you can see gladiolas. Don't sell them short. Don't think of glads as only a sympathy flower. You can see from some of the things that we're showing here to you, our glads can be used for all kinds of things, ranging from a small bud vase to a design that's a little bit more elaborate that can go on uh, your sideboard or on a table next to your bed, to something like this that's a little bit more elaborate, to coming up with very, very dynamic kind of configurations using a diagonal kind of configuration in water. We can do so much with this that goes so far beyond the concept of flowers in a funeral basket. And it opens up all kinds of things. What a wonderful flower. My viewer, we covered a lot of detail in our short time together. I hope that you enjoyed this videotape discussing simple, quick and easy things that you can do with gladiolas. It was a pleasure having you come in here today. Our staff worked very hard to provide these things for you so that you'd get a sense of the variety of different things you can do with this magnificent flower. On behalf of all of us here at Rittner's Floral School in Boston, I'm Dr. Steve Rittner. We want to thank you for coming in and visiting with us today.